Hi, this is Dr. A with the Clinical Chemistry Review video on testing for calcium, phosphate, and parathyroid hormone. So let's start with calcium. Calcium is the most prevalent inorganic ion in the body. 99% of it is stored in a skeleton as hydroxyapatite, and the other 3% is in blood and inside the cells. There are three forms that exist in the blood. The free, which is also known as ionized calcium, which is about half or 50% of the calcium in the blood and bound to plasma protein, which is 40%, and bound to diffusible anions like phosphate, bicarbonate, et cetera, which is the other 10%. Calcium's role in the body. The extracellular calcium is needed for bone mineralization, blood coagulation, and other functions. The intracellular calcium has key roles in muscle contraction, especially heart muscle contraction, hormone secretion, glycogen metabolism, and cell division. Hypocalcemia can be due to vitamin D deficiency, it's a very common cause, or the result of neck surgery. It's usually it's temporary if they were just a little bit disturbed, the parathyroid glands were disturbed during surgery, or due to magnesium deficiency, another common cause because um, chronic disease and chronic stress can cause magnesium deficiency, and all of those can inhibit the secretion of parathyroid hormone. The causes of hypercalcemia include increased intestinal absorption, increased renal retention, increased skeletal resorption, or a combination of these. Uh, primary, primary hyperparathyroidism is the most common cause of hypercalcemia. So a little bit on measuring calcium. So, um, so some important po points for calcium measurement is never, never use EDTA citrates or oxalates because uh, their anticoagulant uh, binds calcium as the mode of action. So no purple tops, no blue tops, no green tops, like, no, uh, sorry, no gray tops, not green tops. But you do want to use a green top or a red top, meaning a lithium heparin or a serum tube. So uh, the measurement of ionized calcium does require a specimen that has not been exposed to air. So the, the tube can't have been opened. Um, and the specimen, of course, as, as mentioned, is serum or lithium, lithium heparin plasma. The method is orthocrystalline complexone, or CPC, or the arsenazer 2 dye, that is, which is complex with calcium to cause a color change that is proportional to the calcium concentration, being the color change is read with a spectrophotometer. Uh, and then ionized calcium is usually measured using an ion selective electrode. The reference ranges for the total calcium is 8.6 to 10.0 milligrams per deciliter, or 2.15 to 2.50 millimoles per liter. For the ionized calcium in whole blood is 4.6 to 5.1 milligrams per deciliter or 1.15 to 1.27 millimoles per liter. They are, um, they can, ionized calcium, calcium can be measured in plasma or serum and the, the ranges are slightly different in plasma or serum, although they are quite similar to that of ionized calcium. And if you kind of look again, as we've mentioned, ionized calcium should be about half of total calcium. And so you can see how these values are about half of what total calcium value are. Next we have phosphorus. 85% um, of it is found in bones with calcium. Uh, it provides the mineral strength to bones. It's an integral component of the nucleic acids, so your DNA and RNA, and it serves as a buffer in bone serum in urine. So it is one of our minor buffer systems, but an important one. The phosphorus has an inverse relationship with calcium. So whenever calcium goes up, phosphorus goes down, or if calcium goes down, phosphorus goes up, or whichever, they, get, they move in opposite direction. Uh, the clinical significance, hypophosphatemia is usually caused by increased excretion due to hyperparathyroidism, but also maybe to DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease like emphysema, etc., cetera, uh, asthma, cancer, irritable bowel disorders, or alcoholism. And decreased excretion is the most common cause of hyperphosphatemia, and that would be to either acute or chronic renal failure. Um, the method to measure phosphorus is an emodium molybdate method, or um, so used using unhemolyzed serum, which leads to the formation of an emodium phosphomolybdate complex and a color change that is proportional to the phosphate concentration. The reference range for phosphorus or phosphate is 2.4 to 4.4 milligrams per dl or 0.78 to 1.42 millimoles per liter. Again, always refer to the ranges that are on your lab report. These kind of give you some guidelines. The specimen of choice, again, is going to be um, lithium heparin plasma or serum. 
And then parathyroid hormone and kidneys parathyroid hormone increases the re reabsorption of the renal tubular calcium and enhances the hydroxylation of 25 hydroxy vitamin D to make it 1 to 5 dihydroxy vitamin D to active vitamin D form. And the bones, parathyroid hormone and vitamin D stimulate osteoclasts to mobilize bone calcium to increase blood calcium levels. Um, and PTH also increases phosphate excretion in the urine. The measurements, so your parathyroid hormone assays usually use two antibodies that bind on each end of the amino acid chain of the parathyroid hormone peptide to detect intact parathyroid hormone. So it's an immunoassay. Um, there are also different assays for bioactive parathyroid hormone. Um, and one thing to mention about parathyroid hormone testing is they're often done as what we call the intraoperative parathyroid hormone during the removal of a hypersecreting parathyroid gland. So while the patient in surgery, they've moved, removed those glands and they draw the parathyroid hormone level and they're looking for a 50% decrease from the pre-op levels. Um, and then if they get those, so then the patient is laying there still in anesthesia with the neck open, they're waiting for the results. And then when they get the results and they're adequate, then they can finish up the, the surgery and know that they've gotten all of the hyper-secreting parathyroid gland. A little bit on the differential diagnosis of hypercalcemia. So um, there are several conditions and they have uh, there's different values to look at. So uh, in pr primary hyperparathyroidism, you will expect to see high serum calcium and low serum phosphorus. Remember to move in opposite directions. Normal or high, imagine high parathyroid hormone because it's hyperparathyroidism, right? High one to five vitamin D and um, greatly increased uh, urine uh, calcium because all that, that high calcium has to go somewhere it's gonna go into your urine. If you see a patient that has cancer with that parathyroid hormone related protein, then you will see a greatly increased serum calcium. So these, can, these cancer patients usually have high, high calcium levels. And low serum phosphorus, again, because they move in opposite directions, but this case you will see low parathyroid hormone and um, high PTHRP if you test for it, and a low 1 to 5 hydroxy vitamin D, and a greatly increased urine calcium because of the high serum calcium. In chronic renal failure, hyperparathyroidism, you will see high phosphorus, uh, which um, causes calcium to leave the bones to try to balance it out. Uh, if you have high uh, phosphorus levels, it's because the kidneys aren't secreting it, don't get rid of it because you're in chronic renal failure there. Um, and you will see great elevated parathyroid hormone with a low 1 to 5 dihydroxy vitamin D and a low urine calcium because the kidneys aren't working, so they aren't able to get rid of that calcium the way they should. And familial hypocalciuric hypocalcemia, again, it is in the name, low calcium in the urine and high calcium in the blood. So you'll see high serum calcium, a normal phosphorus, normal to high parathyroid hormone, normal one to five dihydroxy vitamin D, but of course very low urine calcium. So because it's in the name. In milk alkali syndrome, where patients are taking too much milk products and too much alkaline products like baking soda, you will see a high serum calcium, a high serum phosphorus, so this is unusual there, low parathyroid hormone and high urine calcium because of all, it's because of this high intake of calcium and high absorption of calcium. And then in hypervitaminosis D or maybe a vitamin D overdose, taking too much usually supplement, you have a high serum calcium, low parathyroid hormone, high 1 to 5 um, dihydroxy vitamin D, obviously, because we have hypervitaminosis D, and high urine calcium because you have high serum calcium. And of course, the parathyroid is low because the calcium is already high, so we're not gonna, it's not gonna raise it. All right, and that is it for this video. Thank you so very much.